Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel for this week's toolbox safety topic video. Before we get started, make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below here to encourage me to do more work like this. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel down below so that you're up to date with any new videos released. I hope everyone's doing well today. And today we're going to dive into a crucial aspect of our work emergency action procedures in construction. This is a topic that directly impacts our safety and the well-being of everyone on a construction site. Let's start by understanding what emergency action procedures or EAP really mean. In simple terms, EAP is a set of plans and procedures we follow in case of emergencies to ensure the safety of each and every one of us. Now, why is this important? Well, let me, fair, let me share a few statistics and real life examples that highlight the significance of being prepared for emergencies. Emergencies can happen at any time and being ready can make all the difference. In the context of construction, emergencies can take various forms, from fires and chemical spills to structural failures. Each scenario requires a different set of actions, and that's why having a robust emergency action plan is crucial. So, how do we go about developing an emergency action plan? Firstly, let's talk about leadership roles. In an emergency, having a clear chain of command is essential. We need to assign roles and responsibility. Who will be in charge? Who will assist with evacuation? And who will call emergency services and so on? Communication is key during emergencies. We must establish a clear communication protocol. Knowing how to use communication devices like walkie-talkies is vital. Effective communication ensures that everyone is on the same page and can respond swiftly to, to the situation. Evacuation routes are sometimes all we need to be familiar with. Knowing where to go and how to get there can save lives. Regular drills are essential to ensure that these routes are well known and everyone is comfortable with the evacuation process. Emergency equipment is our next point of focus. Understanding and knowing how to use emergency equipment such as fire extinguishers and first aid kits is crucial. Regular maintenance of this equipment is equally important to ensure it functions properly when needed. Now, training and drills. They play a significant role in preparedness. Regular training on emergency procedures keeps us updated on the latest protocols. Conducting emergency drills allows us to practice what we've learned, identify any weakness, and continuously improve our response capabilities. Let's shift our attention to medical emergency response. First aid training is something I strongly encourage for everyone. Knowing how to provide basic medical assistance can be a lifesaver. Additionally, having trained personnel on site ensures a quicker and more effective response to medical emergencies. Let's talk about emergency medical services. We need to know how to call for help. Having a list of emergency contact numbers in visible location is, is a simple yet vital step to take. In conclusion, safety is everyone's responsibility. We've covered the importance of emergency action procedures, the development of emergency action plan, and the significance of training and drills and the essentials of medical emergency response. As we go about our work, let's keep these principles in mind. Let's stay vigilant, look out for one another, ensure that we are well prepared to respond to any emergency that may arise. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Uh, 
thank you for your commitment to state safety. If safety wasn't a commitment, uh, you wouldn't be here. Now, the emergency action plan, sometimes called or emergency action procedures, uh, should be in your corporate EHS, or if you're working for a GC, it will be in their EHS. And there should be a bulletin board that talks about who to contact in an emergency, emer emergency response contact numbers. Um, make sure that when you train, you have your uh, toolbox safety topic meeting. You talk about the type of emergencies. I've been on chemical plants where the main concern was a chemical spear, spill. I've been on demolition sites and where the major concern was uh, uh, unplanned collapse of buildings. So I've been on job sites on the side of a highway and we had to be aware of traffic. You got to bring all those things up and tell people what to do in an emergency. Listen, when an emergency happens, everyone's under a great deal of stress. Everybody, and the better you plan, the better it'll go. Anyway, that's it for this week's toolbox safety topic. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me uh, down below. I think there's a comment thing. You can leave a comment. And, and if there's a video that you would like to see, let me know about that too. And I'll see if I can't put together a video. The notes on this video are in the description below so that you can use them to perform your own uh, toolbox safety meeting. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for watching. And I encourage everyone to have a grateful day and we'll see you in the next one. How do you stop? <laughs>